Hey guys, we are on a little field trip with Noah. Look at that. You haven't seen him in a long time. <laughs> we have snow about an hour from our house, and so we are headed up to see it. Uh, this will be the first time Noah's ever been in the snow. So a lot of you commented how I've never seen it snowing and thought maybe I'd never seen the snow, but I have seen the snow. I've been skiing a couple times, actually. Uh, it's been years, but um, I've just never seen the snow falling down. But in all this cold weather we've been having and snow so close, we're headed out to uh, Julian, California. It's about an hour from us. So we thought we'd bring you guys along. I even wore shoes with good ventilation. I prefer the beach. The <laughs> no! Oh. oh, that hurts. Yeah, no snowball fights. They hurt. You're cute. You're like a deer. A deer. It hurts! Oh, okay. I thought snowballs were soft. Oh, no, 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 no more, no more. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Come here, we're in the snow. We're in the snow. Oh, wow. They're more a fan of the snow than I am, apparently. <laughs> what? Help us. What do you mean, help us? It's three balls stacked on top of each other. Go help her. That's it? It's, I can't even see it in the camera. There you go. Get some arms on that guy. There we go. Now I can see him. There's a snowman. It works. All right, Noah. Yeah. What was it? How was it? We need the right clothes, people. I don't know how any of you, I mean, y'all can the right Close. clothes, but I can't, I can't. Gloves. Just need gloves. <laughs> so that was fun. All right, so I, we did make some fun memories, but I would not say it was fun. When we would go to the snow as kids, our snow gear was basically my mom putting our socks on and then slipping plastic grocery bags over our socks and then putting our shoes on. It never worked, ever. I always got back in the car and my feet were frozen and wet and I just hated it. And that's why yesterday I stuck to the gra the pieces of grass that were sticking out of the snow because I just have that uh, of that cold, wet feeling on my feet. I can't stand it. I will stick to the beach. Speaking of things not liking the cold, you know, we have had several frost warnings and some frost as I mentioned on the last video. So my Monsteras have been covered up pretty much nonstop for a week. And I thought that they had come through everything unscathed. And then I looked a little bit closer and I noticed that most of the leaves have been cracked open, just little cracks all over them. Uh, some of the, the newer leaves don't have that. So that's unfortunate. Um, they're not going to die. They'll be fine. I just will have to cut off all of those leaves and then the new ones will grow this year. And there's going to be some years like that. I will do what I can to protect them, but ultimately we don't live in a tropical climate. While I'm right here, a lot of you guys asked why I weed eated that entire area instead of mowing it. And the reason is because I do have a mower haven't used it since we got here because our entire property, especially over there, there are rocks, there are stumps, there are some logs. And when the grass is that tall, you can't see where they are. So you just would run over them with the lawnmower or hit them. And you know, that wouldn't be good. So, um, 
it would have been more work to just try to avoid those with the mower rather than just zipping around them with the weed eater. Another issue that you guys were giving suggestions about was the flooding of the chicken coop. And I always appreciate suggestions. Uh, a lot of people ask why I don't put a rain gutter on this roof once it's actually a roof. And that is a possibility. It is a thought. The problem is how do you gutter a thatched roof? Because there's not one distinct drop-off point. It's, it would be a wide gutter because I think, I mean, we'll see. I don't know. I've never had a thatched roof. Don't know many people who have. Uh, the water's going to kind of trickle through some of that on the end and there would be a really wide spot you'd have to gutter. Now, maybe if you caught half of it, it would take away half the flooding. Possibility. So I'm not closed off to that idea. That may be a possibility and it may be easier than a French drain. Back to work today. We had a fun day off, a fun couple of days off this weekend. Well, kind of a half day off on Saturday. And then yesterday we went to the snow uh, in the afternoon. Saturday though, Bill was here and did some more work out here on the um, basketball court area for Noah, getting the dirt all piled up and compacted in the space that it needs. So of course, Noah's very excited about that. And I'm pretty excited about it too, because once he's done with that basketball court, it'd be a perfect spot for a big greenhouse. But that's a few years away. So back to work today. And, and what I'm doing today is taking advantage of the soil being still wet or damp from all of the rains because as soon as this dries out uh, where the paths are going at least where it hasn't been amended it's going to be rock hard again and then i'm going to have to use the jackhammer and it's not fun so if you notice right there this dirt here is above the level it needs to be so that needs to be taken down there as well there's going to be a step at the end of the house that goes across the path so you will step down and then that will be the same level until right here where the steps go. So I'm gonna dig a little bit down here, cut this down here and just make this all uh, nicely level or it hardens up to save me some work. And then I have to make a list of everything I need because a couple of videos coming up on Next Level Gardening this week, uh, one is going to be a spalier fruit trees that I'm gonna be putting along this wall. So I'm gonna be doing a video on how to do that. Okay, you're gonna think I'm absolutely ridiculous, but you see this moss here? I've never had moss like that any place I've ever lived. So this one patch of moss has me so excited. <laughs> I like, I wanna dig it up and kind of preserve it and take care of it and see if I can multiply it and put it in places that I'd like to have it, even though it probably just takes way too much water and will die eventually anyway. Good morning, girls. Morning. You've already been fed. I'll give you some grass later. So up here in the cottage garden, um, this far side, over here to the right of the run and right on down here where all this wire is, this corner of the cottage garden is going to be the fruit and vegetable patch. Just like someone living in this cottage would have a nice bit of flowers and herbs, they'd also have a vegetable patch with fruit. So we're gonna have I'm gonna have some fruit trees all around this space. Uh, we're gonna have a vegetable patch right here where I'm walking, but then against the fence, some room to walk behind. There's gonna be uh, blackberries and raspberries all in this area in the back. So I'll be doing that video on Next Level Gardening this week. And um, right now I've gotta take measurements of all of this because I have some materials I've gotta go get before I can start the work and I don't wanna start the work and then go get the materials because then I'll be all dirty. So best to just get it done this morning, head to Lowe's and then come back and put the time in, uh, in the garden. All right, I'm back from Lowe's, so I'm gonna get to work. I've got all the wood and everything I need. First thing I'm gonna do is get started on the berry trellises because I've gotta film the video tomorrow. So we need to get those in the ground and the cement and all that fixed up. So tomorrow I have those ready for the video. So I'm gonna be using four by four posts so one, two, three, one down in the corner, and then one over here, about eight feet apart. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these pieces of wood. I've measured at the base where they go into the ground. So the top, the ground level, basically. And I'm gonna measure five feet above that and cut them off. 
That way they'll all be five feet above the ground. Once I get that finished, I'm going to dump a little bit of cement into each of the holes, put the post in, get the level out, and then dump cement in around them as I hold the level. I may need Noah or Emily, or Emily to help me with that. It's the next morning, and I'm going to show you what I did yesterday before getting started for today. So I'm in the vegetable garden, and let me turn the camera around. So I was able to flatten out this space here. I got a little bit more to do by the wall. You see where that grass is. And then I cut it across right there, so there'll be a step down uh, at that point. And this will have to continue to be cut across to where you see that dark area there because that's going to line up then with this wall uh, so I got a little more dirt to remove here I was able to take the dirt that I did I pulled off over there and actually fill in this area now so it's almost up to where it needs to be and then of course there'll be um, gravel on top of that but then I had the problem of I had more dirt here than I had space down there to put it so I ended up starting to fill in an area over on this side by the wall that never got filled in before, right here. You probably don't even, have never seen it before, but this used to go down. I had never filled in on this side of the wall, so it was about a two foot wall here, and it just kind of sloped off into a hole down there. So I got all that filled in, and then I just kind of let the spirit take over. <laughs> and I ended up getting this area all flattened out, all the grass taken out. There was the, these stepping stones, there was like a little, I don't know, outline here around the, the deck with those. Got those taken up. So now this area is ready for gravel, almost. A little spot here by the house. And then that gravel will go all the way through here. Really got to get these tomatoes cut back. And then it will join up right here, all the same level, and continue on there that way. Now I'll take you up by the cottage garden and show you what I did up here. Morning. So I got, basically, I got all four of the posts in for the berry trellis. They're in, they're set, and they're level. So today I have to film the berry planting video for Next Level Gardening. And so I still have to run the lines, the wire, through these posts. Uh, before I can start the filming. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I've already marked the post starting at the top, six inches down, two feet down, and three and a half feet down. Completely arbitrary measurements on what I thought might work. So now starting on the first post, at each of those markings, I'm going to put a hook eye or a screw eye, and then I'm going to attach a turnbuckle to each one of those. So that post is ready. For the center post, I'm just drilling holes all the way through the four x four at those same levels. Basically, you're just gonna run the wire right through the board and that's what's gonna hold it on the middle. Now I've got some galvanized wire, 16 gauge. Um, I'm gonna hook it to the turnbuckles, go through the two posts with the holes, and then uh, attach it on the turnbuckles at the other end, and then tighten everything up.
All right, all three wires are on and tightened up all the way through these posts here. Making the turn and ending here. Now this is pretty much the same design as I had at my last house, except I'm using wire instead of furring strips going across between the two uprights. It worked fine at my last house. However, it did, uh, furring strips don't last that long out in the weather. And so I had to replace them a couple of times while we were there. And there are other more elaborate trellis designs that I've seen. Um, if I need them, this trellis design is actually adaptable. So I'll be able to add, uh, some of them have V-shaped wires, kind of, you have the center post and then you have two out at an angle and the wires run there. So it kind of holds the blackberries and raspberries from flopping. We'll see, but for now, it's in, it's sturdy. I am gonna be painting the posts to match the chicken coop posts. So, uh, but right now, I just had to get this done because now it's time for this project to be taken over by Next Level Gardening amending the soil and planting. So you can check that out over there. It came out last Tuesday. It's a few days later. And uh, fortunately I got most of this video filmed at the beginning of the week, Saturday, Sunday, maybe Tuesday. Anyway, so that day I filmed the video for Next Level Gardening. And that night I started feeling sick. And I've been sick now for, what, three or four days. So I haven't got much else done. I mean, it's just a cold, but I felt lousy. Today I'm feeling much better. I'm still sounding a little bit sick. And then to top it all off, more rain yesterday, today, two more days next week. <laughs> um, however, as I'm starting to feel better, I'll get plenty of work in. I'm gonna try to get more, lots more work done this coming week and more videos to make up for the couple that I missed on Next Level Gardening this week. So anyway, I just wanted some kind of an end to this video so I didn't just leave you, but um, I hope everyone else is doing well. Hope you're enjoying your weekend and I'll see you soon.